You know, you see it all the time. Every religion, if you were to look, if you were to put on a diagram up here, what every religion looks like as it envisions its members and God, every single religion has an arrow pointing up. Us working, trying to climb. You know, what did those guys do? What did that represent back in the Old Testament when those guys got together and tried to make a ladder unto heaven? You remember that? They were trying to climb up to God, climb as high as they can by their efforts and their power and their wisdom and their ability and their gifts. But in Christianity, the diagram is diametrically opposed to that. It's the arrow coming down out of heaven. God descending, bringing grace to fallen sinful man and saying, I do the work. It's me. It's not you. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, what did he do? Condemned sin in the flesh. You say, what does that mean? Jesus Christ was born of a woman, born under the law, and took upon him all of our violation and unholiness. The Bible says he calls us worms in our natural state. And the Bible says Jesus Christ became a worm. And he paid the penalty. He condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4 of Romans 8. Listen to this. So that the righteousness of the law, imagine this, every single one of the 613 commandments would be fulfilled in us. Past tense. That's how God views you because of Jesus Christ. He looks at you as having performed all of the law absolutely perfectly. That's how he views you. In spite of our frailty, in spite of our failures every single day, he says, you are holy and blameless. You have performed the law perfectly because that's how I view you because of what my son has done. Isn't that awesome? That's the good news. That's the gospel that Jesus Christ performed the work of God on the cross to pay the penalty for sin so that he would look at you and say, you're totally perfect as far as my law goes. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh works, but after the spirit, faith in Jesus Christ. For they who are according to the flesh, what happens? They mind the things of the flesh. But they who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And you can tell them by their fruits. A person who is trying to justify themselves, they're constantly pointing the finger. They're constantly ridiculing other people, saying, you must not be a Christian. Look at what you did. They're looking on the outward. The Bible says God does not look on the outward. He looks on the heart. Praise the Lord. He looks upon what he has done in our lives because of the cross. He says, but they who are according to the Spirit, they mind the things of the Spirit. We're constantly trusting in the grace of Christ. Amen? He says, for to be carnally minded, you say, well, most people say, you know, you ask the question, what does it mean to be carnally minded? And the first thing people think is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> right? That's what it means to be carnally minded. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Good grief. You know? I mean, I do all those at least once a month. <laughs> I listen to rock and roll. I make love to my wife, by God's grace. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. And I sometimes take drugs because ibuprofen works. <laughs> right? You say, well, wait, that's, that's not funny. It doesn't matter what it is. We, we all take drugs in some form. I mean, if you're drinking tea, you know, if you're drinking caffeine, Coke, take an aspirin. It's drugs, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. God has given us wonderful things. Luke was a physician, right? There's nothing wrong with that. We all go to doctors. It's a beautiful thing that God has given us. Sex is a wonderful thing. Rock and roll. I, I love rock and roll. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I try to watch the lyrics of what I listen to, you know. But I think Boston's the greatest band ever. <laughs> 
It's not about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, people. To be carnally minded is to be trusting in your works to have the everlasting life. That is to be carnally minded. It's death, he says, separation from God, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's walking according to the Spirit, trusting in Jesus Christ. Because the carnal mind is what? At enmity with God. Isn't that amazing? Those who are trusting in law, God says they're my enemies. If you're trusting in works, he says, no, you're my enemies. Philippians chapter 3 and 4 calls them the enemies of the cross. That's why he said, in you that were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, he has reconciled you in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God. Now watch this. For it is not subject to the law of God. The mind cannot obey the law of God. The heart can't do it. You can do it outwardly, but your heart can't. That's why Paul said, I had not known lust except the law said thou shalt not covet. The law pointed out his heart. That's what God is concerned about. And the heart blows it all the time. We're so focused on the outward that we forget about the heart. And they love to be seen. The Pharisees love to be seen. Look at what I'm doing. But Jesus said inside they were filled with dead men's bones because they weren't trusting in God. They were trusting in self. And he says, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so then they who are in the flesh. It has nothing to do with your physical body, does it? Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It's very important. If it has to do with my daily blow it, oh man, I was in the flesh, I was in the flesh. I don't say that. I used to have a pastor of mine, and he would constantly tell me that, man, you know, bro, I was just totally in the flesh. You know? He was a Calvary Chapel pastor, but he didn't understand the, how the Bible uses the word in the flesh. And we get together for our little meetings, you know, and that's exactly what he talked, just like Chuck Smith. Anyone ever heard of Chuck Smith? Anyone? Please take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 4. <laughs> right? Remember Chuck Smith? I don't know how many of you guys know him, but it's funny. Well, all the Calvary Chapel pastors like to sound like either him or Greg Laurie. Okay? So this guy was kind of a combination deal. He was like... Well, please take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 4, <laughs> right? And so he'd say, sit down with me, bro, I was really in the flesh today. I'm sorry. <laughs> but back then I was like, yeah, you were, bucko. <laughs> you were mean to me. <laughs> now I'd say, no, 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 you weren't. 